This video essay is brought to you by Squarespace. Where do we come from? It is a question that we have pondered since the dawn of time. Before there were clothes, before there was currency, before there were cars, before there were, I don't know, iPhones. Before there was any of that, there was where do we come from? Earlier this year, Sir Ridley Scott gave birth to Alien Covenant. A beautiful and horrifying look at this very question. Scott's film is angry, violent, and insane, but it perfectly represents the subject of this discussion, humanity. What Scott wants to show us with Covenant is that creation is scary. And not only that, but the idea of an all-powerful god, one who chooses who lives and who dies, is horrific. It is not something to dabble in, it is mutually exclusive. There are two characters in this film who have what psychologists have coined the Messiah Complex. This psychological discussion revolves around the idea of one individual believing themselves to be a god or a saviour of some kind. The director addresses this theory through the character of David and his creator, Peter Wieland. When Covenant begins, we are introduced to a toddler like David. We can presume this is set not too long after he was created by Wieland. In a scene that plays out like something from a futuristic version of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Wieland delivers some facts. I am your father. Scott begins the theme of messiahs and, well, creation almost instantly. Wieland here has played God. He has gone and created life in his own image. In this scenario, an audience is instantly reminded of the book of Genesis, the first chapter in the Bible, in which God, in bracket, Wieland, creates David. The lavish white surrounding also plays into Scott's allusion to paradise and the inevitable conclusion that it will crumble. In fact, Whelan actually references the whole where do we come from thing when he remarks The question of the ages, which I hope you and I will answer one day. Where do we come from? Whelan's statement unknowingly inspires David's messiah complex, as the latter believes that he has been put here for a reason, to create. In fact, when asked what David actually believes in, he states Creation. Scott also foreshadows the second act of the film when David begins playing the entry of the gods into Valhalla on the piano. Waylon remarks that the piece is a little anemic without the orchestra. Funnily enough, the second act actually includes a large ensemble of characters, the orchestra, taking refuge in a deceased land, an obvious reference to Valhalla. David raises a rather poignant statement that sends chills down Whelan's spine as well as the audience's. You seek your creator, I am looking at mine. I will serve you, yet you are human. You will die, I will not. Here, David is Satan, or the embodiment of the devil. He is standing against his creator, Whelan, a literal symbol of God. David feels great frustration and anger from being a creation rather than a creator. If you created me, who created you? Interestingly, Scott introduces the upgraded version of David in Walter. Michael Fassbender portrays both characters and completes the idea of good versus evil. Watch me. I'll do the fingering. Here, Scott creates an image that appears almost like a connected triangle. Wieland is God, David is Satan, and Walter is humanity. Like God sending a flood to rid the earth of scum, David sends a black bioweapon, killing the native population of human-like creatures. David has a rather difficult time understanding the horrors of creation. He believes that his creations, the xenomorphs, are that of perfection. When Captain Orem kills one of his creatures, he loses control. Here, the creator has witnessed humanity's capacity for evil. Humans have gone and killed the one thing he loves. It trusted me! Orem directly compares David to Satan when he remarks, David, I met the devil when I was a child, and I've never forgotten him. In a later scene, David shows Orem his prized possession. As he enters a tomb, we discover four alien eggs. Orem, being the stupid human he is, trusts David, who calls the egg Perfectly same. As the egg hatches and wraps itself around Orem's face, we watch as David gazes upon this horrific act. He does nothing. Ah! 
Here, Scott wants to show the audience how inconsistent God is. When God sees an evil act, a murder, a rape, or whatever, he does not intervene. When David and Walter come face to face for a final time, the former states that humans They don't deserve to start again, and I'm not going to let them. The two stare each other down, evoking a powerful image of creation versus creation. David has become obsessed with building his creations, going as far as to kill Elizabeth Shaw, a companion from the previous film Prometheus, and experiment with her human organs and DNA. David asks Walter a simple and poignant question. Is there in heaven or rain in hell? Now this further proves Scott's attempt to align David with Satan, as the character is literally paraphrasing Satan's now famous quote from John Milton's poem Paradise Lost. And this question pretty much summarises the entirety of the film. Scott wants his audience to be wary of creation. He wants us to be careful when it comes to mixing pig and human DNA. Because at the end of the day, we are not gods. We are pathetic, silly, and incapable human beings. <laughs> Don't let the bed bugs bite. Hey guys, I just want to talk to you today about my amazing sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace are a really easy and simple way to create web design. If you have a website, a blog, a shop, Squarespace can come up with a really easy and awesome design for your site, and it's incredibly simple to use. As you can see, the video that's playing over the top of this right now is my website. I have a list of my favorite films on there. I have my recommendations. So much stuff that Squarespace allowed me to do. And you have that amazing opportunity too. If you use the code that appears on the screen right now, you get 10% off your first purchase, which is pretty, pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of jealous. So I just wanna thank Squarespace. And I also wanna thank you guys for watching my Jake Paul video, which is doing incredible numbers. I'm really, really happy with that. I do wanna announce though, that I will be taking a tiny, tiny break. No. It's not true. That's impossible! As you can tell, I'm pretty young and I'm in university. Um, I have exams coming up in the part in the next three weeks. So don't expect a video in a fortnight. I'll try get one out in three weeks time. Simply because, I don't know, university, they decide to drop all the assignments now as well as the exams. I, I don't, I've never understood that, but that's life. I will be back, but I will be taking a very, very short break. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you like it, subscribe, you know, thumb it up, share it on Reddit, whatever. And definitely check out Squarespace. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you. I'll see you when I see you. <laughs>